sorry not to speak Arabic because my Arabic is not so good so I don't want to make people uh, uh, sad about it I, mean, I understand Arabic of course You know, I'm, I'm lucky because I, I grew up in a family where arts and music and literature are um, very important, you know, and uh, not so much uh, business and money, but uh, just the fact that you express yourself in a, in a way that inspire people around you. So I grew up in this family and uh, it has always been a, a real pleasure to be part of this uh, good energy. You know. My father, <laughs> he he made it uh, possible to play Arabic music on trumpet. So he made from a regular trumpet an Arabic instrument. So the, the, the instrument I'm playing is Arabic, is uh, and he actually, my father calls it uh, Arabic trumpet. So he, he played trumpet all my childhood, I've been listening to him. Uh, I grew up listening to my, my, my father's sound on trumpet. So. It made me naturally want to go towards this direction. I also play piano. My mother did not teach me, but she used to play every day. She's a pianist also. You know, a trumpet has three valves, and he added a fourth one that allows the, the musician to lower any note a quarter. So you can play quarter tones, you can play all makamat, and and that that's so easy. <laughs> Uh, you know, when I, when I said to my family that I was going to do a tribute to Uncle Sum, everyone was, wow, that's great, but there is one in my family who did. Hmm, why didn't you do a tribute to Feiruz? You know, there's always someone to say that. <laughs> well, I love Feiruz and she's the greatest Lebanese artist ever. But um, I, I grew up also listening to Uncle Sum's voice and Feiruz's voice. And, you know, it's just a choice. I already did a tribute to Feiruz a few, a few years ago in an album. So I wanted to do... Uh, and you know, each song of Uncle Sum is one hour length, so it has to be one album. And and I love Uncle Sum's voice, and so I, I wanted to do that. <laughs> I've been traveling to 28 countries playing Uncle Sum's music. Um, through jazz language. So people are loving Um Kulthum. You know, it, it's um, a great feeling because especially these days where you can feel, you know, sometimes you feel empathy, but sometimes you don't feel it. And um, to be honest, uh, I feel that these days there's kind of a racism against Arab culture, against Arab people. And I'm feeling it every day in France, in the United States, wherever I go. I feel lots of people giving me love, but I also feel lots of people not giving me love. So... It, it's a great feeling to see that people who don't know anything about Arab culture suddenly comes to me after the concert and say, I didn't know Um Kulthum was so cool, you know. <laughs> I don't really know so much about uh, what's happening in jazz in the Arab culture, in the Arab world. Uh, I know that in Lebanon there are some very good uh, jazz festivals. I know in Dubai there is. I know there are some places where people listen to jazz. But let's be honest, Arabic people don't necessarily like jazz so much. So we have to bring, to create bridges. And since I love jazz music, one of the reasons why I wanted to do Kaltum and, and take Um Kaltum's music is to bring Arab culture culture to Western people who don't listen to Arabic music, but also to bring jazz music to Arab people who don't listen to jazz. Uh, 
you know, each album is um, is a long process. Most of my works and albums uh, take me between two, three, four years each to re to be ready to release them to people. <laughs> 